The students who work in the, in the physiology lab, it's called a psychophysiology lab because we're measuring physiology and we're looking at psychology things. A couple things is, well, they learn about physiology. They learn about the brain, they learn about neuroscience. Um, they get hands-on experience about connecting the, the brain and the body and the mind um, reactions to actual cognitive events. Another thing is that the, the lab produces a great deal of data. Um, physiology labs kick out a lot of data, and those data are, are difficult um, to aggregate and to interpret, and so there's a lot of work on just learning about data and, and um, data analytics and statistics, so they get some good experience of that. I study primarily about how people and animals make decisions, how they learn, how they make decisions, and what influences those decisions. Um, this has a broader um, aspect in a field called behavioral economics, and so we study animals in labs, we study people, and then we have a better idea how people make uh, decisions about everything from uh, stock markets um, to saving for money and things like that. The way I study it is I create computer games for people to play. Sometimes these games involve risky decision making, gambling, um, decisions about what's equal and fair in a, in a competition. And then I um, uh, attach electrodes all over their body and look at physiological responses like their heart rate or their heart rate variability, how, how from one beat to the next changes. Um, I put electrodes on their forehead uh, to look at facial expressions. I put them on their fingers to look at whether their hands get sweaty. This tells me about their emotional connection to their decisions because all decisions are made with our thought process, our cognition, but also our emotions. And so I look at those interrelationships. If students are interested in my lab, it depends on the student. If they want to work in my lab as an undergraduate student, that's great. I try to make um, my lab available to anybody who wants to work in there at any level. The best thing to do is to send me an email and we'll set up a time to talk. We'll talk on Zoom and I just want to know your interests. Um, what do you like about psychology? What are your future goals? Um, I might suggest a few things to read, like a, a good book on behavioral economics or, or a TED talk to see if this is the kind of thing that they're interested in. They should know what they're getting into before they work in the lab. Typically, grad students who want to come and work with me, there's a little bit a longer process. We'll have a few meetings. We'll talk about a few things. I'll send something for them to read, and then we'll talk about it. Because um, the grad student program, you know, it's two years. It's quite a commitment. I think the number one advice, and I give this to my children who are now in college, I give this to any students, is if you have an interest and a door opens, you, you go and you just hope for the best um, and things will change. And you have to be flexible to those types of changes. And what you do in a PhD, it's not necessarily what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. One of the greatest experiences about doing research in a lab, uh, having that experience, is you get to see the fact that there's always problems. There are always confounding variables. There's always things that don't work. Um, and the question is, are you able to overcome them? When I went to Oxford, I thought Oxford University is the, the cream of the crop. I went into a lab that had equipment from 1972 and they gave me a soldering iron and said, make it work. And I said, okay. And they left me alone for three months and I just had to find a way to make it work. Um, those, those are problems, you know, everybody, you know. And so uh, that's just the nature of research. It never, it never comes out the way you want it uh, to perfectly. Um, and, but I, I always go by this sort of axiom that uh, good research doesn't answer questions, good research creates new questions. And that's a good way to, to, to go forward.